month two, and it's February the 3rd of 2023. Um, I'll just give a few minutes for people to jump in. Uh, hopefully everything's working as it should. Uh, <laughs> fingers are crossed. Um, the I, I do apologize for last month. There's, uh, technical things are just really difficult, and I don't have a TV producer in the next room who can help me. Uh, so when things don't work, and they work when I check them, and two hours later, they don't work. So it's it's scary and frustrating and um, all of that. So uh, I hope that we're in good shape now and uh, everything looks like it is on my end. Um, so I'll just start by saying that uh, I talked with Alex this morning. Uh, very happy to hear from her. She is coming coming along. Of course, she's home now. And uh, she's hoping those brand muffins kick in here pretty quick. If you've ever had to take some serious pain meds, you know that they come with, uh, they're a mixed, a mixed bag. They're a necessary evil uh, because they do tend to give us what the television ads calls a sluggish gut. Uh, so she's kicking in with the brand muffins, hoping that that's going to work here. And uh, she's also been told that greasy fries and guacamole can do the trick. So that's for lunch for Alex today. Uh, John's taking really good care of her. She is glad to have the, the bad parts uh, out of her body. She feels very confident about that decision. She is uh, feels the love and support uh, and light from everybody and appreciates all your great thoughts. It's, you know, it's hard as a public figure to go pro public with uh, this, what's really private, but um, she knew that she could be helpful to people. So for example, in talking about this with my husband, he said, when was your last mammogram? I went, oh, a year or so ago, I get one every year. So I pulled out my calendar and my phone and I looked and I just, cause I could search the calendar and I went, that can't be right. It was October of 2019, three and a half years. How could that have happened? I, I couldn't believe that. But I checked with the, the location where I have my mammograms done. And sure enough, that's when it was the last one. In those times, I had changed. We got rid of the landline telephone number so that they didn't have my cell number. And um, we had changed email addresses. So those kind of things happen. And then the pandemic and all of that. So that same day, having that discussion with my husband, uh, which actually was while I was at the orthopedic place getting my knees looked into, uh, right that day, I scheduled in a mammogram. I had it two weeks ago. And this week, I got the that good message that's... Um, said, everything's clear, see you next year. And so I've already scheduled next year's mammogram. So uh, if you're due to have one, and to remind all your friends, everybody, this is just normal part of um, good health screening and, and the process. So it's not a big deal. I've, I've gotten done for, um, you know, gosh, every year since my early 20s. So um, it's just part of what we do. Uh, and how it, let, it went three and a half years that I didn't have one is beyond me, but that won't happen again. So I have scheduled, uh, like I said, next year's already. So um, that's great. Uh, of course, Alex's attitude is really terrific. Um, uh, <laughs> I shared with her a photo that was shared with me right after Alex's uh, public announcement right away. And, and she and I had talked before that. And I said, you know, uh, there's going to be people who want to make you a quilt. Oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. And I said, I know. And I'll make sure that doesn't happen. So, um, oh, okay, that'd be great. So sure enough, within a very short period after Alex's announcement, I was contacted by someone on Facebook who was putting together right away a, a quilt for Alex. And I, I'm, I'm afraid I shouted with capital letters. And I wrote back, no, stop. Um, please know Alex doesn't want this. Um, the, the thought is wonderful, but that's not what she wants. And there are other ways to, to help and to be supportive. So um, and at that time, the scarves, the infinity scarves and the pillows were just being, uh, we were talking about it on the quilt show and Alex was showing how to do all of that. So um, this person was great. She jumped right in, uh, changed gears. And um, so she has I uh, shared a picture with Alex this morning, and you'll read more about it in an upcoming newsletter. She got a group of friends together. I think they're in the Boston area, and they started making these infinity scarves and donating them uh, to local cancer treatment centers. As quilters, uh, we don't know that the whole world doesn't sew, and there are probably patients who don't have someone who can make something special for them like that. So being able to do that and donate those in Alex's honor is a great thing. And she was thrilled uh, with the picture. So we're going to hear more about that in upcoming. Um, so Sally, great job. Way to go. 
if you're here, and I'm sorry I shouted at you. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's get into, oh, and those the pillows, that heart shape um, pillow Alex said this morning, that has been a lifesaver because you can't roll over and you can't turn just right. You just can't get comfortable. And being able to support um, her arms in different positions, she said the pillow was wonderful. So um, that's important for you to know too. So, okay. So let's talk about things here. Month two, Homeward Bound. First, I'll remind you again about the resources that are out there. First are the videos. There are two videos this month that Sarah has done, one on stems and one on circles, uh, not surprisingly. So do watch them completely. They're there to be a, a big resource before you start, okay? Um, the pattern, of course, read the words in the pattern. I have a tendency to just jump in and think I know what I'm, uh, what I'm doing, but it's always helpful to read the words because it'll explain things. Um, my blog, uh, I like to think, is extra helpful for people. I write it once a month on the Quilt Show's block of the month, so it comes out about the first of the month. When this month we released block two, month two, a day early, I just changed the um, schedule date and immediately released my blog too because I had put information up there too. That's the one chance that I can get and write and talk to everybody and say, here's things for you to, to, to know. Um, so take advantage of that. If you I always know when people haven't based on the questions that they ask um, and Sarah's show show 32 of one that went live January 1st. I play it in the background once a week or so while I'm doing other things or working on this quilt because I hear other things each time. Uh, it's very good. Uh, I love to hear her accent anyway. Uh, but Sarah's got great tips and things for you to see on there. So um, do take advantage of all of that. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the document camera now and show you some things. Okay, so uh, let me tell you that when someone posts on the forum that the pattern has a mistake, my blood pressure goes way up. It just, uh, automatically it goes up. Um, because while I have spent hours and hours proofreading uh, the quilt, probably the pattern probably uh, at this point pushing 35 hours or more to checking everything and then checking when corrections have been made. Um, that's not to say my biggest nightmare is that I've missed something really important. Uh, and I, uh, that would be really, really scary. So when someone says the pattern is wrong, my blood pressure goes up until I can go and check it. So this week there were folks who were saying that the pattern alignment was wrong on the patterns and that the one was right and one was wrong, which one was the correct one. So I want, I had to figure out what that was about. So first thing I did was assured myself that no, they weren't wrong. Okay. All right. So that's okay. So then what is the question and trying to figure out where the, the reasoning came from. So, uh, and in the video, one of the two videos that uh, the one on stems for month two that Sarah did, she shows this exact method of how to put this together. So for the stem for month two, there are two pages that pertain to the stem. Stem diagram part one and stem diagram part two. So the first thing you have to do with stem diagram part one is cut it. And so she shows how you use a ruler and get this angle just right. And the part that's really important is this little teeny black line here, which is hard to see under camera, but that it's, um, let's see if I can get closer to it. No, probably not. Okay, a um, little tiny black line. So I use my ruler, cut it off, and realized instantly that I had left the black line on the wrong piece of paper. I'd left the black line on this piece I was getting rid of, and I'd gotten rid of it where it really needed to be, down here. So I simply um, laid it here again, used a purple marker so I could see it, and made my black line on this piece of paper, the lower half of stem diagram part one. Then you take stem diagram part one and you align those two black lines right there with, let's see if I can untake this here, with the join, where it says join, these lines right there, okay? That gives you the stem diagram placement for where the stems go. Once you have that ready, then you are ready to trace the stem lines. So I'll talk about that just a little bit. But so here it is where I have traced it. And on my blog, I have uh, pictures of every bit of this as I went, if you want to see it again in, in, with words and pictures. But you lay this on here and you just trace the line. Now, Sarah's favorite pen is one that we can't seem to get in the United States for some reason. It's a metallic silver pen. 
Um, it's a hybrid pen to what brand is it? I even forget now. Um, and I should have been able to see it. But anyway, uh, it makes a nice little line. Someone else on the forum wrote that the, this Jelly Roll silver pen, not the gold, not the white, but the silver Jelly Roll from Sakura uh, also seems to work very well for her. She had done some other Sarah um, blocks of the month and found that this was helpful. So I just, I happen to have one of those and I wrote out on this piece of dark fabric here, Pentel Gel Sarah Filky pen looks like this and the Jelly Roll pen looks like this. They look very similar to me. But any mark that you put on a quilt, especially if it's going to be in an open area, this line will be covered by a stem. So if you've drawn the pencil line close to the middle of that, where the line, you're going to cover it with the stem so it won't matter. But later, if you were drawing lines that you might um, not be able to completely cover, you'll want to make sure that the pen, any whichever pen that you use, whatever your marker of choice is, that it comes out. Everybody's water is different, everybody's climate is different, and pens will work differently in different locations. So um, test before you uh, go too far along. Okay, so I used a light box and I got this line on here, just had it ready. And now it's ready for the stems to be placed. And her uh, Sarah's video is great about exactly how to put the, the stems in here. So backing to a minute me trying to figure out why people said it didn't match, there are two other pages for this month, and those are placement diagram short stem, placement diagram long stem. And all I could think is that people were trying to take these two lines here and put them like this, which of course does not match this one. And so that's what I think the problem was. This page and this page are not to go together. They have nothing to do with going together to each other. It's these two pages that generate the stem diagram. These are used individually for the um, placement of the circles. And so this one is the short stem, which is this one here, the shorter of the stem. You could use a light box to see where to place the um, circles. Also, if you have a dark background where you can't see it through a light box, just simply use this as a guide. Sarah mentions that you don't have to put them exactly. This is very free form. These are botanicals and everybody's flowers ought to look a tad different. So you could just use this as a guide. This big double one goes about here and this little one over here. Um, so whatever you, wherever you want to put them is fine. She also mentions that you can use a variety of the fabrics. So we'll talk more about fabrics in um, just a few minutes. The Let me talk about now with the, um, the stems and making them. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so um, I'm sure you've seen on Sarah's uh, video and on the show how she used a Hera marker. And I had one of these from years and years ago. I remember using it to mark... Um, straight lines for hand quilting through a quilt sandwich that was already basted all three layers. This will make a nice uh, crease long enough that I could see it to hand quilt it through. I can't quilt the, mark the entire quilt for, you know, a half a year's worth of hand quilting. But every day if I had straight lines, I could use this to mark it. And then I put it away and uh, as I don't do a whole lot of hand quilting anymore. So, uh, but that's her method and she shows a great way to do that, that she uses um, very successfully with her hair marker. I've tried her method. Um, I don't have, like some other people have said, I'm having a hard time getting this where you use the iron in this hand and this one to keep, to get those little edges turned under. Um, so, but that's just, um, I'm sure that takes practice. And so I just haven't gotten there yet. The uh, couple of different pieces, this is what Sarah's looks like when she's marked it a quarter inch finished. It's a quarter inch finished here. It's about an eighth turned in on either side. And it's, it's really just two layers of fabric. It's not at all bulky. And that's the way she likes to make hers. The way that I typically make mine and um, that I find that has worked pretty well for me, and I've actually put this one on here with little dots of glue. I cut my strips three times the finished width that I want. So if I want a quarter inch finished, three times a quarter is three quarters. And I cut out a bias strip that's three quarters of an inch. And then I just stand at my iron and I turn in 
Oh yeah, I've got some glue in here. So he's gotten, I practice with the glue. I just turned in one side toward the middle, um, just with the iron. And then I turned it around and went to the other side, coming out, coming out the other way. And Sarah mentions this in um, one of her videos that she doesn't like that method because it's fiddly and you have to be careful to make sure that the uh, underneath edge is not sticking out beyond the folded edge, which is absolutely true. And the other thing that I find is that I may not get it exactly one quarter of an inch all the way down. I may have slightly wider places, slightly narrower um, places, but I'm fine with that. Um, there are other ways to make bias stems. Karen Buckley uses um, has her wonderful perfect stems um, invention. And Karen's show is show 2007. Uh, if you haven't seen it lately, you should go back and look at it because she shows how to use her perfect stems and how to use her perfect circles to make perfect stems and perfect circles. So I don't need to show you her method. Let the expert who invented it show you her method. So it doesn't matter how you make a stem as long as you're happy with the way that it looks. So the, so make sure I'm telling you everything I want to tell you. All right. Once you've got it ready, then um, you have to secure it and um, to, you could pin it if you want to. If it's pretty short like this, you could pin it. I like to take my hand applique things with me. So using a little dab of the white glue um, works very well. A little dot is what we're talking about. I learned this from Sue Garman, and Sue's show is still available to watch. I think it's show 310. And she shows a teeny, 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 teeny little dot of glue. And we're talking about, that's a pretty big dot of glue. That's actually big in the grand scheme of things. Little, little dots, tiny little dots, okay? And you just need to put them, you don't have to smear a line along where you're gonna place it. Just, oh, every, inch or two is fine depending on how tight the curve is little dots okay and that back in there all right then you just take it and place it along the line and use your fingers to hold it and get it in place sarah's video says that she believes that you shouldn't use a dry an iron to dry it because it tends to spread that dot out and make it larger and she's correct I didn't know that, so I made, uh, her videos came, I got them uh, the week of Christmas, but I started making this quilt in September. So there's a lot of things on her videos that I wish I had known before. Um, so do take advantage of them, but it's just a matter of getting it in there where you want it to be placed. It only needs a couple of dots, not very much of glue. Now, I like to do hand applique, but um, I do it where it really matters on, on the smaller things. These stems is such an easy way for me to do it by machine. So uh, on the blog, I posted a link to Alex's Neutral Blooms class, which was last summer, I believe it was. She has great video. Now she's got a much better setup at her sewing machine than I do. And she shows this exact stitch. It's a blind stitch. Here I've got it in white thread so you could see it. But if you use it here, a dark thread that matches very, very closely, you're not going to see it at all. It's a simple little blanket stitch. Mine is set uh, like Alex likes to use hers too. It's 3.0 in length and 1.0 in width. Play with your machine and see what it um, will do for you and how you like it. I put it over here in white so you could see it. On this side, I said, well, what would it look like if I did a zigzag? And yeah, I didn't care for the zigzag at all. So the little stitch is very nice and you want a good thread that matches um, as close as possible. So this is one of those um, half yard pieces. This is matcha, one of the pieces that we got in the kit. The other one for making stems is this. So I just wanna mention one more time that we each got half a yard pieces of each of those, these for the kit. They came separately later. And you'll want to make sure you have a, if you're, whether you're hand applicating or um, machine applicating, this, look how great that, that, that matches that thread. This is color 275. Uh, it's the 80 weight thread from Quilter Select. I know that because of the orange stripe and it just blends beautifully by hand or machine. You wouldn't see these stitches at all on a darker thread of fabric. You're going to want a darker color. 
so that it also matches. This one is the 60 weight fabric uh, thread. I know that because it has the green stripe on there. Uh, and it's a cotton covered poly. It's a little bit thicker than this one. Uh, has a, that feel of cotton. So you may like that really well. When I'm doing hand applique uh, for like the berries and those other things, this is my go-to all the way. The Quilter Select pre-wound bobbins. They're all the 80 weight Q, the, yeah, the 80 weight Quilter Select. And I never don't have the color I need. Every color that is in there will work just fine uh, somewhere in my quilt. I also use these for binding my quilts. I like to turn the binding to the back and hand stitch them down. It's a very strong, fine thread, and you don't see the stitches at all. So thread makes a difference whether you're hand appliqueing or machine appliqueing. Sarah also talks quite a bit about this in her videos, so take a look at that. But these two half yard pieces, when we get to month seven is when we do the large wider border that has birds and hearts and lots of flowers and Sarah says that it takes a half a yard of one fabric if you want to make all of the stems the same. You don't have to make all the stems the same but if you want to you've got two half yard pieces you need to keep one of those to use for month seven um, and if you run out you could um, try to source some more but you could always add something else that's close in the grand scheme of things one in stems on Trees, they're not always exactly the same color. So uh, anyway, so that's just some ideas about stems. Let me see if I covered everything I wanted to say there. Um, okay, I will put my mine under the camera so I can show you a little bit here. Mine is sewn together now through up to month five with month six. These little stars in the corner we do in month six. We actually in month six, I'll tell you, we do all of the stars that go forward, month six and forward. So for people who are changing background fabrics, you'll have to think about that. The month six stars are actually going to be used in months 10, 11, and 12 when we get to the outside borders. But anyway, so here is one of mine. Um, as I said, this middle is all put together. And the uh, I just used a variety of the fabrics. I didn't remember when I started this, I didn't have the kit yet. It was two months before I, I ended up getting the kit, but I had a jelly roll of these Tula pink fabrics. So I was able to use the same fabrics. And sometimes I just added other fabrics. Of course, there's nothing on this one that's different. Um, but I have some... Uh, here's one. This fabric is not in the kit. <laughs> it's just a fabric I love, and I love the color, and so that's what went there. Um, and Sarah says in the instructions with these, you don't have to use the exact same color exactly. If this one here is is a in her quilt is blue, is you want to put the yellow one there, that's fine. It's more a matter of the sizing. And someone else had already said again that the pattern was missing, and again my blood pressure went up because it said not all the, the circles are accounted for. They are not all accounted for in month two. They are made in month two and month three. So we make some in month two and we make some more in month three. But remember, you already know what the size is because in month two, we have the sizes of them. You know where they go. So if you wanted to make lots and lots and lots of circles, you could. The only thing new that we're going to get in month three is this shape, this little leaf shape. And uh, I want to warn about that right now because somebody will get ahead of me in March before um, I've gotten a chance to talk to you live or um, or they didn't read the blog where I will stress this. The, <laughs> um, the instructions for month three say to use photographs of the quilt for placement of these small leaves. You don't have placement of the leaves on the patterns. She says to refer to the quilt for placement. So I did, I had these four hollyhock blocks done and then I added the um, leaves. And then I got to month four and we started these uh, cone flowers, which are you know in the middle of each of these. And in every one of the blocks, I had to take off a leaf that I had too close. I had spread the leaves out according to where there was bare space on here. And sure enough, every single time where this one of these cone flowers comes out, remember there's one on this side, I know one of these got moved at least once. In some blocks, I had to move two. So she does mention in the video, or on the, I think it's on the video for month three, to wait to place some of these leaves until you get the cone flowers in place. Then you'll know where the space really is. And that is absolutely smart advice. 
don't put all of these leaves. I mean, out here, you know, they'll be fine. You can put these in here. Uh, you may decide one's going to go in over here. But um, if you put them out here where you would be inclined to put it, I'm sure here to tell you at least one of them will be in the wrong place. And when you lay out your cone flower, you're going to have to take this one off and move it so that you can put the cone flower petal and then go back and add the leaf. I did it a lot and I wished I hadn't had to. Now, if you read my blog, you know why I have a leaf out here. If you haven't read my blog, it's just a secret and you'll never know. So these are just some of these. Um, pictures. Okay, so I'm not going to talk more about making the circles of the other than Sarah shows exactly how she used these templates. This little plastic template is used as a guide for her in deciding what she wants in the middle. The inside ring is the size, the finish size, the outside ring is the cutting size. And so she talks about uh, how to do that. The If you don't have these, another really handy tr um, tip, and I use the um, uh, perfect circles. I use Karen K. Buckley's perfect circles. I made all of my 116 circles month two and three with this. Here is a handy dandy little tool. You can get these at the office supply store. This one happened to have been sold back in the 80s when we were doing a lot. I was doing a lot more of hand applique and it was sold by uh, an applique teacher named Pat Andriata. But uh, you can buy these in the drafting section of any office supply store. It's a it's a template for circles, basically. And so let me see if I can put this where you can see it a little bit. Yeah. So each one is marked with what size. So if we have a half inch circle, which we do, the small circle is about a half an inch, and you need to cut out your circle a half an inch larger than that because you need a quarter inch seam allowance all around, I just simply look for the one inch circle, and I can draw that on using this little template here. I can, let me see which size this one was. He was there, that was the size I needed there. So I just used a mechanical pencil on the wrong side of my fabric with this template. I drew the cutting line. I've got several of these. You can see I've already used some. I just marked them off. And then at night when I'm sitting in front of the television, um, I can just cut those out on the line. And I use, I use um, quilting thread because I have a lot of it to, to pull the stitches together. I just, this is one that I'm using for a different making for a different project, but I get them all done. I put the little templates in there. I take them to the iron and spritz them with spray starch or sizing. Let it soak in first. A lot of people will put spray starch or sizing. And the first thing that happens, they immediately hit it with a hot iron and it, it, um, dries flakes, especially starch, instantly. So no, you have to let it soak in to the fabric. So that's a nifty little trick. And somebody mentioned that on the forum that they had one of those um, circle templates as well. And okay, circles. Okay, Sarah has that nifty method with foil and I've, I've tried it when, um, it's kind of interesting how that works. She does clearly say, do not, do not, do not try to use the foil method with these very expensive plastic Templar. The foil makes it extra hot and you will ruin these. So that's why she uses cardboard, little pieces of cardboard in her small kit. Have these little cardboard segments. This is one of the ones for month eight. This is template E um, for month two. So um, there, but you, she says cut them out like cereal box if you're going to make those her method. And you can do that too with the thing. Now, one of the, but one of the things she mentioned is that the crease will um, give up pretty quickly once you take the foil out and the cardboard out. And I knew that that was going to be a problem for me because I wanted to be able to make 116 circles and take them with me for weeks while I was traveling. But someone else on the forum mentioned that she's done some Sarah Block of the Month and what she found helped. She made them in advance, the same sizes, and she would make them and then put them all back together in that little foil with the cardboard around them and tighten up the foil packet again. I went, oh, now that's a good idea. So um, that would, would work pretty well. And that's a, a suggestion for you to try. So I want to share my screen now because I'm going to show you a few things. I'll make sure that you see. Okay, so here I am on the forum. I'm logged in. I know that it's got my name and it's got my name, my picture over here, and I'm on the forum. And so we're going to look at Homeward Bound. 
the I just want to show you a couple of things quick. How are we doing on time? Oh gosh. Okay. So I'm going to move along on time. Um, so these yellow ones are what are called sticky posts. They, I've left them there so you can find them again. The one is about by a stem fabrics, the new fabrics that we got shipped to us. Um, uploading photos several times this week, people have tried to upload a photo and it doesn't post. And I know instantly it's because the photo was too big. That tells you how you can um, resize the photo smaller and have it work. And then background fabric by, for, by border. I was asked um, if I would do that. Uh, Sarah had mentioned on one of, I guess on some place that um, she would have a layout by the uh, different amounts of fabric for each border. And that wasn't there. So I went through and counted. But I have that information stays there as a sticky. It's very important. Anytime I provide information that's not in the pattern, I get nervous because right away people say, oh, well, should I do this or should I do that? And one person, as soon as she saw that, said, should I take the five and a quarter yards of kit fabric and chop all of it up now into the sizes that you've mentioned by each month? And I said, no, 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 please don't do that. No, please don't do that. Um, because it's just for people who were saying, well, I want to use my stash and how much do I need for the middle and how much do I need for the next row and how much do I need for the next row? So anyway, the are, this is how you can find a lot of information. And I do encourage you to, um, I'm going to click back in here again, to use this as a way to find things. For each month, I have a post that's called, in this case, month two, show your progress here, month two, ask questions here. And so if you, and sometimes somebody starts a, a particular topic that may have already been covered, but um, if every single person who had a question started with a new topic, we would quickly have thousands of topics to scroll through. So anything that you can put that seems to be that a topic's already there, like ask questions, that's a great place to put it. I'm just gonna show you the show progress one more time. Um, when you go into any of these, if there are photos that have been posted on that topic, click on to photos. And it's only two days into this. So far, we have two photos. Helen um, W. is doing a dark background. And I forget who this person is, but uh, she got hers made at this point. She's gotten a good start and gotten herself ready there. So anyway, that's how you can see just the pictures. And then if you wanted to see the actual posts, you click back to posts and then scroll through them. I'm going to show you another place, see quilts. I was asked for by people who said, I want more pictures of the quilt. Where can I get some more pictures? So um, Captain John was great. I asked him if he could fix that. And so he did. And he put it under featured quilts. And there's a lot of quilts under featured quilts. So let me show you how you can find it in a hurry. Just simply start up here in the search box. And I'm going to type in Homeward. See if that all, I'm going to spell it correctly. Because if you don't spell it right, it's not going to work. All right. Down. And I do Hermit, and when you come up to Homeward, the C quilts, now it's got Sarah Show, so there's under Watch, there's Learn, there's C quilts. So let's hit C quilts. We'll come there, we go right there. Homeward Bound Block of the Month 2023. So this takes us now to the gallery, to the featured quilts. Uh, we're under C quilts, featured quilts, Homeward Bound. And here are five photos. You can save any one of those photos to your computer if you wanted to. Uh, you can look at them in detail. I'll just click on one here, this one. And this is these are photos that were taken by Gregory Case of the quilt after it was finished, and, and we got it um, in this country. And so you can see all the beautiful quilting. A wonderful Australian quilter did all of the quilting. So there's some more detailed pictures and things like that. So And this is month seven, and I talked about that great big border. And see what I was talking about with the stems? It wouldn't matter to me if these smaller stems were made out of other fabrics, if the longer ones were all the same fabric. It just, you know, you, you get, it's your quilt, you get to decide how perfect it has to be. So let's go back out of there. And, um, but I am in the forum all the time, and that is a great place to ask your questions. I'm checking several times a day for questions. Today, I tried to answer some questions that were left under comments in the, the actual pattern. And in each case, when I answered it, um, I got a little pop-up that identified my answer as spam. So it didn't post the answer. So I got to get that figured out uh, through the with the quilt show people and see if we can get that um, straightened out. Um, OK. All right. So let me go back to my screen now. Come back to the laptop. 
All right. Okay, I'm going to see if any of you have any questions. We are um, not too far off on time. As I mentioned, next month we're just going to have the rest of the circles and the leaves. And be careful then where you place the leaves. Don't be in a hurry to put them down. You can always add them after the cone flowers, which we do in month four. Uh, so let me see if I've got any questions here. All right. Okay. Uh, um, the first question that I saw up here is what about that small circle? Uh, in the video, Sarah mentions that her foil method can be used for all but the tiniest circle, the half an inch circle, and she would talk about it a little bit later, but um, we haven't, she hasn't uh, mentioned that yet. So I wrote her just the other day, and of course there's a long time, there's a 15 hour time difference between us, but I wrote to her yesterday and I haven't gotten an answer yet. Um, asking about that small circle and what her technique was for that. So uh, as soon as I get that, I will go into the forum and I will start a new topic called uh, Sarah's Method for Half-Inch Circle. <laughs> so as soon as we get that, um, which is great. Um, so that that's really helpful. Ah, I wonder if anybody would ask about the quilt behind me. The quilt behind me is called Full Circle. It's That's half of it. It's not the, the quadrant on the left, but behind my head isn't finished yet, but it's getting there. Um, I'm going to have some big information about that a little bit later this year. I'm going to be uh, uh, real excited about it. So I've been working on it. That, that takes a lot of work. The pattern is Full Circle, and uh, it's by Wendy Williams, Australian designer Wendy Williams. She made our Color My World quilt. So all right, I'm just looking here to see. I've got a lot of people from lots of different places. <laughs> Somebody says Vero Beach is nice and warm. Um, we're sunny today, but cold. Uh, we were rainy all week. I'm happy to see some sun. Um, yep, I mentioned that's full circle. Uh, <clears throat> liver war. Yep, 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 yep. And hi, everybody's cold. Uh, yep, yep. Rondi said, when Alex go as a public figure, Alex can do so much to help with people. Um, making sure that we know to get our screenings and get taken care of as, as quickly as we need to. Um, okay, let me see. And they've got a link there to my blog. So, all right. Yeah, whatever your method is for any of these things, there are lots of other ways to make stems. We've only touched the surface with just a couple of methods. Um, so there's lots of ways. And I don't use, so somebody, Ellen asked, did I use stabilizer behind them for machine applique? I didn't um, need to do it on these narrow ones, especially I think with my method where it's three layers that are a little bit thick and a couple of dots of, of glue. Um, so I didn't find that I needed stabilizer behind it, um, but you will have to, to see. And I asked about my blog, which I've got in there. Oh, I was going to show you that too. We're, we're running long, so I won't go back into there. But you can find the link to my blog. Go back into Learn to Block of the Month, Homeward Bound. And there's one of those options is Facebook Live Barbara Black. Click on that, and there's a link right there directly for it. Now you can also Google my name, and it'll show up too. Um, yeah, and then clicking on those pictures, Carol Grant mentions that when all those photos that I showed you, the features, you click on that picture and it'll zoom in as much. You can see it really close. And as I said, you can save those photos to your own website or uh, your desktop or wherever so you can see them again. When I get information back from Sarah on her that half an inch circle, I will provide that in a forum topic that will be clearly visible that you'll be able to see it. Um, yeah, okay. So let me go back to myself over here. Okay, so um, I do go on to Facebook and on YouTube and see if there's more questions later. Sometimes people put a question later and I try to answer them for you there. But um, I am, I'm on the forum all the time to answer your questions. So that is great. And please share those good tips. It's the, the person who shared the tip about being able to um, stack up the circles inside the foil packet, that that would help keep the, the creases. I thought that was brilliant and that never would have occurred to me. So be, um, that's great information and sharing your pictures and your progress are terrific. Also share on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtags that we ask you each month in the, at the very end of each month pattern. It tells you what hashtags we ask you to use so that they can be found. I know Sarah's watching from her side of the world. She wants to see what you're doing as well. Um, because remember, we're the only people in the world that are making this quilt right now. So um, that's really terrific. Um, okay, so um, get your mammograms, uh, hold your buddies close, uh, make things that you can help other people with, and um, enjoy making Homeward Bound. Till next time.